neighbors try to tell you that every car you bring home is too loud and that it's disturbing their whole entire family and shaking their house. Fuck you, and you, and you. All right, welcome back to the channel, everyone. Lots to update you on. Uh, wow, it has been quite a while since I uploaded a video. Life has been crazy lately. So as you have guessed by the thumbnail and title of today's video, I have in fact totaled the Lamborghini. As you can see, I'm actually in the wife's car today running some errands and I wanted to get you guys caught up on everything that's been going on. We have a lot to talk about. So first things first, I renamed the channel Life with Adam. Um, the other name, Life Through Our Lens, was conflicting with other channel names. And go ahead there, Slick. Lights green, get off your phone. I'm over here recording a YouTube video. Don't get angry. People get so upset when you tap the horn. Like, I'm preventing us all from sitting at the red light, okay? Just take it easy. Um, where was I? So, I renamed the channel Life With Adam because the algorithm just wasn't picking it up. I mean, not that I've been uploading much lately on this channel. Uh, of course, NFA Review Channel, my primary channel is the Money Maker. So that's the one that I've de you know devoted all my time to, So, which is understandable. So, um, And now that we're pregnant, we have the doctor's appointments going to and all this going on in our life. I haven't really had a chance to, to devote time to plan videos for this channel editing stuff like that so uh but i'm gonna try my best to maybe turn this into like a family vlog type channel those seem to be pretty successful uh again it's a lot of work so if i step up the production value it's definitely going to take some time to uh to take off because it's a lot of work um you know it's not just sticking a gopro to your windshield and talking into it it's a lot of editing a lot of planning and a lot of topic choosing so speaking of which today's topic so, it is currently St. Patrick's Day. It's probably going to be a while until I upload this video you guys are watching now, but I totaled the Lamborghini on November 9th, so quite a while ago, last year in fact. So, um, long story short, oh man, I missed that car. <laughs> Jesus, what a waste of a good machine. Long story short, I was hooting and hollering around Clearwater, so uh, quite quite far away from my from where I live, and on the way home, and it was dry, so we were having fun. We're out there having a blast in the Lambo, uh, doing what we do, and on the what is this? Hold on a second, ah, it's just a Corvette. Thought it was a Ferrari. One of my buddies lives over here. He has a red 488. Anyway. Um, where I left was dry, perfect weather. On the way home, it was raining. I got caught in some light rain. Not that heavy rain that washes away oil on the ground. I'm talking that light rain that's a little bit heavier than a mist. So, uh, what I remember happening is I went to downshift to go around another vehicle. And uh, I wasn't even speeding. Go figure. Uh, I mean, nothing... Nothing cool or crazy happened. Basically what happened is the car hydroplaned. Um, with the Lamborghini Huracan and other Audi products like that, can't, I'm gonna get fucking dragged for that one. But uh, <laughs> other products like that that offer the same software for the dual clutch transmission, it has, I forget what it's called in the manual, but it has almost like a slam fire mode for the transmission. So if you're on a track and you're in track mode, and you hold the downshift paddle, it will call down the gears rapidly and skip gears um, as low as the transmission and engine can possibly handle. So it's not obviously not gonna redline and blow your engine, but if you're going, say, 60 miles an hour and you hold the paddle too long, it's gonna slam that sucker down into second gear from like fifth or sixth. And I believe that's what happened. Uh, that's what I remember. So one minute I was driving straight and a light drizzle clicked it once I thought to downshift the car started spinning and I flew off the road at about 60 miles an hour maybe a little faster I don't know I really don't know how fast I was going to be honest and um, once the tires hit the wet grass that was it it was like ice skates you have that mid-engine spin uh, of course once it starts rotating that mass just whips around 
I don't even know which way was which. It was it was dark out, and I ended up hitting a um, FDOT aluminum fencing. You know the kind that they put up um, to keep people falling off an embankment, like next to a sidewalk. So I went, th I kind of slid along the fence, took out like 40 feet of this thick aluminum fencing and flew off a five foot embankment and hit like six small trees, wall spinning. So pretty much hit every body panel on the car except for my door, uh, but the carbon monocell. So if you're not familiar with the Huracan, um, it's actually a you know part aluminum, part carbon fiber frame underneath. And the carbon fiber basically starts where the seat ends for the driver and passenger, right? And then it goes up all the way to the firewall to the roof line. So it's kind of like this, you know, this is all carbon and then everything else is aluminum around it. And um, the trees and the fences were slamming into that carbon fiber section and it cracked the carbon fiber. Now, I don't know how familiar you are with carbon fiber and its strength properties, but it is some really hardcore strong stuff to, to absorb that energy enough to crack a carbon fiber monocell on a supercar it probably saved my life or at least from serious injury because um, anytime you have like a lateral force you know lengthwise on a car you know that's a lot of weight with the engine and everything moving sideways you can wrap around trees wrap around poles stuff like that so the car definitely did as designed and saved my butt none of the airbags inside fired by the way and that's okay um, it probably would have caused me injury if it did, possibly. Airbags are only desired to, you know, when there's a sudden stop of the vehicle, to allow your 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 organs and your body, you know, time to decelerate. Uh, because I was spinning and shedding off speed through the grass and through the fence and through the trees, the car didn't come to like an instant abrupt stop. So, uh, you know, the computer algorithm, when with the airbags and the computer decided that it, it really wasn't needed to fire all the airbags. So the side airbags, the front airbags, none of them fired. Um, I am not sure if the pretensioner fired in the seatbelt. It might have, I don't remember. Uh, but as you can see from the damage, it pretty much did a number on it. That uh, $10,000 or whatever it was, Rift exhaust system, full titanium, that's totally destroyed. Um, no salvaging that. Um, all I remember is getting out of the car it was up in the air like this and you know the front nose was like caught on that five foot embankment so I was like looking up at the stars when I stopped and I got out and when the door shut I heard the glass cr crumbling from the rear engine compartment so I knew I was like oh man and I looked down and I saw my axle the rear driver's axle was kicked out so I'm like okay well it's total I mean even if I didn't hit the frame if you hit the drive line, you know, the wheel in a car like that, a supercar, you know, that wheel is attached to the transmission, that's attached to the engine out back, like all that, mm, that side force, it's gonna destroy something. And a transmission in that car is god awful expensive, not, not to mention the engine. So I knew right then and there it was totaled. Um, then when I saw it the next day and following week, at the junkyard I, I i initially went to the first yard took some pictures got all my stuff out um and then uh went to the secondary yard they towed it to for the adjuster it stayed there for a while uh, that's when i really realized how serious it was because it was dark i couldn't really see anything i ended up going to the hospital to get my neck checked out because it was really sore that night um signed out i was fine went home no big deal um called the insurance company they weren't too thrilled as you can imagine $185,000 tab to pick up, but uh, they, they they did their, their job. I got paid. It took about 40 days, which sucked, uh, but they did pay me the full amount value for the car, so that was cool. So, wrecked Lamborghini aside, the real reason why I wasn't upset at all, really, I got out of the car and I was not upset. Everybody's like, oh my God, how upset were you that you totaled your Lamborghini? And I was like, well, it's insured, and uh, to be honest, four days prior, to totaling that car, I had heard our daughters now, we know, heartbeat for the first time at the ultrasound. I'm, let me tell you something. That really changes your perspective on things. Uh, hearing the heartbeat, seeing the ultrasound definitely makes it real. And um, 
you know, she's all I thought about when I got out of that car. I was like, thank God I didn't just turn my wife into a widow over a freaking Italian supercar. So, uh, I'm thankful for that. So really that's, that's the short of it. You know, wrecked a Lamborghini, lived to talk about it. It's not a big deal. Got paid. No harm, no foul. Um, I took the money from the Lamborghini, bought myself a MP5 machine gun I've wanted for a long time, transferable. So if you know how much those cost, you know uh, what a dent that did. And uh, the rest of the money I invested. So a lot of people ask me, you know, when are you gonna get another supercar? And I really, there's a couple of reasons why I'm not getting one right away. Uh, one is I really don't want my daughter to grow up around them too young. I want her to appreciate what they are and what it takes to achieve uh, to, to, to earn one, to buy one, to work hard. And uh, two, she's gonna be born in June. I mean, what's the point of me going and dropping 150, 200 grand on another car that I can't even enjoy myself and my daughter can't ride in until she's what? I don't even know. What, what age you can ride in a car without a car seat in the front seat? Eight, to be safe, maybe? Eight years, eight years old? And I'm not going to be one of those, you know, husbands and fathers that, uh, you know. All right, girls, I'm going out for the day. Going to go party with the boys, grab the Lambo, and go out all day. I'm just not going to be that type of dad. So I'd rather take that money and invest it. We'll use it for traveling the world and letting her see the world and get cultured. And then later, when she's more mature and she understands what, what it means to own a car like this, then I'll revisit buying another one. So there's plenty of time. I've already owned the Ferrari, the McLaren, and the Lambo, so I know what I want now. I know what brands. I'm probably going to go back to Ferrari. Uh, that's what Lindsay wants. She wants either the 458 or the F12. Uh, so we'll see. V12 front mid engine or V8 mid engine. I'm leaning towards the 458 Italia because it's actually my dream car and I still haven't bought it yet. Probably because I really don't want to meet my heroes that young. You know, they say don't, sometimes you don't want to meet your heroes. Well, while the Ferraris and McLarens and Lambos are cool cars, I started to get a little numb around them, you know, not get too excited. Uh, even when I was driving it down the road sometimes and I'm looking down at this emblem that says Lamborghini and I look around and I'm like, what am I doing in this thing? You know, I didn't get that feeling a lot. I would have to force myself to be appreciative, uh, which is weird. I know it might sound bad, but that's just, that's just the case, you know, when you own them and you start driving them too much. I mean, I was driving 1,500 miles a month, which looking back, I'm glad I did. I got all that experience, you know, that I paid for. Uh, but, you know, it's going to be good for me too. I can take a break from them. So when I go back in, a, you know, 8, 10 years, it's going to be a lot more special. So what are we going to do on this channel from now on? Well, I still have plenty of friends with supercars. Uh, my buddy Clay's got a 2019 600LT seen that on the channel that thing's badass put up a little video here of him shooting some flames out uh my buddy jameson has a 2017 r8 as well as a 2012 458 uh spider that he just picked up and i have other friends with 488s and it's just we're gonna be around supercars she'll be around supercars of course you know we'll you know introduce her to that world for sure we'll bring you guys along for stuff but i might turn this channel into like a vlog channel on just everything we do so supercars traveling whatever if it's interesting i'll try to film it and get something edited for you guys so just want to kind of give you guys an update on the vlog i know it's been a long time since i uploaded i just left the bank and picked up a rather large check for a gift for my wife for the baby shower so that that is going to be a video you don't want to miss. Uh, this has been, I've been planning, it's uh, currently St. Patrick's Day, so March 17th. I've been planning this since the 1st of January of this year. So really put some thought into this one. So stay tuned for that next video. It's going to be coming up soon on the channel. And uh, it's going to be pretty epic. That's something I've wanted to do for a while. And I hope you guys enjoy that video as well as this one. So if you liked the video today, Make sure to click that subscribe button, smash the like button, and of course, click the notification bell if you want to be notified of more upcoming videos. I'm going to do my best to only upload entertaining stuff for you guys. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.